Arr, grog. Hey everyone, it's a Sideship Podcast with me, Peter Fickling, Kerry Warbis and Matthew Weir. Uh, so, exciting news, Kerry has something positive to say about this week's The Archers. Uh, take it away, Kerry. Not only is it positive, it's positive about Pat. I was just telling you two, wasn't I, before we hit record, that I was trying to think, oh, which bits did I really like from last week? And Pat's acting, well, not Pat's acting, the woman who plays Pat, um, I thought was absolutely brilliant on Sunday. It was the opening bit with Harrison where she'd gone round to, he was listening to a Eurovision podcast, bit weird, and she was all a jitter about Rob appearing and wanting him to do something about it. And I just was listening with my AirPods in and uh, just thought, she's crackingly good. And actually, I know we have a bit of a laugh about Pat as a character, but maybe the actress is amazing. You had your um, earpods in and you were listening to Pat going on. Was it Dolby surround sound? <laughs> <laughs> She's got, actually got a really good voice, I think. Mm. I think Pat, Pat as a character is horrific. That's, you know, no one needs to debate that. But. She was really hitting the money, I thought. We do make the the point frequently, don't we, that um, just because we hate a character doesn't mean we don't appreciate the uh, the quality of acting that goes yeah. in to make us hate the character. Like, you know, um, I mean, who have we said it about before? In our defence against other people, there was so much Russ hate, but there are a lot of people who were willing to come out and say that Anthony is a brilliant actor because they made... Yeah. He True. made them hate the character so much. But wouldn't you also say the same for Helen? Yeah, no. definitely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I, so, I, I would because, you know, um, Ryan, who plays Lee, Yeah, he says that he has a right laugh with the Helen actress mm. about how sort of cringe they both are. So that makes me no, think, yeah, awesome. that actress is is super good. Because they know it's their sort of awful individuals. Well, with their flaws, I'll try and be generous. Um, but so the thought of um, Ryan and the Helen actress <laughs> yes. having a complete laugh about what they've got to say and how they've got to say it, I I really enjoyed that detail. Yeah. No, that's very true. And and also I've got to remember that it was only a few months ago that I was actually starting to find Helen a bit more appealing. I was enjoying her kind of like new domestic life with Lee and I was kind of relaxing it. I think it's the return of um, uh, Rob that's um, got me all, mm. you know, it's, like, it's, it's basically, it's like Pavlov's dog. I'm, I'm back to sort of instinctive loathing of Helen when in fact I should probably take it, you know, like consider my, re sorry, continue my reassessment and think more about a bit more about, um, you know, what they're doing with the character. Although the window Hasn't made it easy for yeah, me. Yeah, I was about to say, you sure it's just not the introduction of the window that's made you despise her? <laughs> yeah. I'm baffled about what you think was quite nice about Helen, really. Uh, it might have just been I was trying to be contrary and just piss you two off by saying... <laughs> okay, yeah, that's got to be it. <laughs> Let's chuck an advert in and then um, we can, having got all the positive comments out of the way, we can get in, you know, put in a good 40 minutes of slagging off the rest of the stuff. Guys, Coronation Illumination or Euro Trash? Which one are we going to take on first? Well, hang on, I haven't finished with Pat yet. Oh, sorry, Matthew. Well, as you said, Harrison sat there enjoying this Eurovision Europod, wasn't it? It was called, which is possibly. Yeah. Is that the one that Ryland is doing on the BBC? Because this is all one big oh, probably, yeah. circle jerk for the BBC, isn't it? This whole Eurovision thing. Mm. Let's make no bones about it. And he's just sat there chilling. And then Pat just storms in, screaming, defund the police. And he's like, oh, would you like a cup of tea? Mm. I felt for him in that situation because he did have to manage her anger. And he was quite fair about the fact that he had contacted the police on the South mm. Coast. They hadn't got back to him. So it's not really his fault, is it? I don't think... No, but who should she go to? You know, she's going to go to him. And, and yeah, he did handle that really well. How he sort of went, um, when she went, 
and you know you're protecting the um perpetrator rather than the victim and no wonder everyone hates the police and it you just went <laughs> there's a big pause and he went would you like a cup of tea <laughs> yeah i mean what you can't see because it's obviously a radio show is she is wearing a f- the police nwa t-shirt during that scene <laughs> I did send you to my very proudest moment, which was my little boy singing um, oh, yeah. KRS-One and the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop. It's the sound of the On police. the train. Yeah. Sound of the yeah. beast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think, like, yeah, he, he, he's good in those moments, isn't he? And he's, he did say, like, you can come to me anytime, not as a policeman, but as a friend. He he can see she's getting really jittery. Oh, and he actually said, I'll speak to Hampshire, which I thought was quite impressive. He's going to speak <laughs> to the whole county. Yeah, maybe you'll stand up in front of a, the entire county on a stage <laughs> with a microphone. <laughs> now, look here. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard of Eurovision? <laughs> anyone, got, anyone got a big screen? Um, yeah, mm. I mean, Harrison went right through the mill in that episode, didn't he? Because he mm. also had to have that really intense scene with Paul later on when they were talking about who was going to help with the funding of the Eurovision thing. Oh, God. And Harrison went full, like, kind of Jon Snow, didn't he? And he went, you don't know Linda Snell. <laughs> <laughs> She'll rip your limb from limb, boy. There'll be nothing yeah. left here. All and Linda uh, are a you know, formidable team. As I called them tonight on Twitter, Panda. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, very good. They're a good pair, aren't they? And she, of course, said, "Oh, you know, I, you know, just you know, on the quiet here, I do actually appreciate somebody challenging me because usually they're tippy, tiptoeing around on eggshells." Um, so she respected him, saying, "Your cheese idea is shit." Yes, no one normally has the courage to tell me I'm an interfering control freak, Paul. <laughs> I mean, guess the cheese with no wine. Mm. <laughs> there was that moment where, like, Paul just went, a what? And Harrison went, yeah. a cheese evening. <laughs> well, yeah, and then afternoon. they went, yeah, oh, it'll have to be an afternoon. <laughs> yeah, they just went, it's a bit boring. And you just heard Harrison go, oh, my God. She did a sniff, didn't she, at that point yeah. as well, to end the episode. You had a great gag on Twitter, Kerry, didn't you? When, uh, I expect so, yeah. Harrison said... Uh, Linda said, what about Fallon making the cake? Or oh, Fallon, she's a bit full on at the moment. She's really full on. Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah. So she's, she's uh, what is she, changing her name? She's changed her name. <laughs> it's only a vowel though, isn't it? Uh, that went down a storm, that tweet. Yeah, I just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks. Oh, what we need now are the bells of the tumbleweed which sounded exactly like the bell ringing that Alice and Chris were doing. Did you not think? How did that idea even get off the ground? Because the last time, not talking about bell ringers being lifted up by ropes there, it was the last time we heard it, Chris suggested it. And mm. it literally did get the bells ringing in, in front of Ian and Adam. where they were. I imagine Chris ran out of the room and they were like, what the... What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> bell, ring, bell ringing? Is he mad? And then suddenly it's happening and she's doing yeah. it. And she's like, I can't believe I haven't done this before. I used to love watching you. Oh, it's really weird. Oh, it's so relaxing, um, Alice. Several tons of clang and brass and steel are like five feet above your head. It just helps you go to another place <laughs> and just you know, all your cares drift away. I don't think about anything when I'm doing it or when I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. I mean, how does the guy not have tinnitus? Because he's either bell ringing or banging horses' hooves. Exactly. Yeah. He probably can't hear a bloody thing. He's deaf. We've only just <laughs> realised he can't hear Alice. That's why he hankers after us still. 
<laughs> like you know like there's a reason why chefs which you know they famously all eat absolute shite after their shift they don't go home and cook again they like you know mm. chuck a burger Have in a their KFC face or something, or something. <laughs> yeah exactly and like for my job like i've always been very suspicious i've always thought the people who do my job and then go home and do it again as a hobby are absolutely mad and normally terrible <laughs> like you know it's just the idea that you know you like like matthew's hinting like the idea that you spend all day smashing bits of steel in a tight you know in a, a smithy and then go you know and that's what you do on your weekends it's crazy <laughs> oh dear yes he is well and also obviously there's the hint isn't there that you know he's still got feelings for her and because he, he was like going oh you're bound to be good with me as your teacher and she's oh <laughs> are there hints that these two are gonna be getting it on then and she's going to watch him do the coronation peel. I thought we've already done this before. I thought we've already been through this, the, where Chris got confused and it went backwards and forwards. And then Alice mm. put him straight. Well, it, was, it wasn't just that. It was Neil. Um, no, Eddie started running a book in the mm. pool, didn't he, about them getting back together. Yeah. And Chris was like, I'll take that bet because it's not happening. Yeah, because he was sort of going, of course I've got feelings for her. She's the mother of Martha and, you know, that's what it is. It's We're just friends. I wonder where this story will bell end. <laughs> I'm sure he can't get anyone else anyway. He never goes anywhere, does he? Well, Amy's, uh, where is she? Amy's gone back to Birmingham. Maybe Amy will return. Oh dear. No, 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 no. That was Sorry. that was bad. Hang on. The, I didn't... the police are actually coming to get me for suggesting that. There's a siren <laughs> outside the window. Whoop, whoop. That was all crazy Sunday, wasn't it? That was right at the beginning of the week. What has Alice been trying to get out of her head this week? Because, you know, when she's up there reaching um, Chris's zen like state, state, I mean, obviously there's uh, losing her mum, Jenny's will, and now her concern mm. that Brian isn't going to give her, uh, you know, all the money. Well, it's, they are quite ghoulish, this bunch, aren't they? <laughs> Their mother has just died. She got left 15 grand. Mm. Uh, she now wants to distribute it, but not all of it. Yeah, of course. Of course, I'm... Yeah, like, can I have Sander's bank account? Uh, I'm going to be giving bits of money to all of the grandchildren. Obviously, not as much as I got. Just very strange. And then she just went, I don't suppose there's any weird stuff left in your... Uh, in your will, is there, Dad? Dad, is there? Have you done something weird? And they had a conversation about the... What, what, how did they say they would divvy it up? That some most of it would... Oh, yeah. the, what was left would go to the five kids, but the farm would go to the... They'd already decided, hadn't they? They sort of said to Brian, this is what your will should say. Yeah. It should be this. He very diplomatically just went, okay. <laughs> just yeah. stared at them. I loved it. And him. they were like, is that what you've done? He was like, it's, he basically said, it's none of your business. Yeah, what's in my will is my business. And the goal of Adam to say it's a generational thing. No, it's not a generational thing. Mm. When your shitty kids start asking you to your face, how much money you left me when you die? Yeah. I think you're entitled to say, well, thanks for dinner and I f off. Yeah. Hey, I came up with the right good pun about all of that. Brace yourselves. Okay, I'm strapped. Beef. In. Beef, yeah. Willington. Oh, because <laughs> there was Peter. beef about the Peter. will. Peter, you know, you need, you know what he needs to. Do. No, I disagree. I, I laughed. That was a sincere laugh. That was not a polite laugh. <laughs> I thought I, I'm giving. I'm not going to tumbleweed <laughs> beef Willington. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you like it. Yeah, all right. Well, it's going. It's it's going in the pod description anyway. For sure. You're just jealous, Matthew. <laughs> next time, next time that um, you do the edit, feel free to chuck a tumble tumbleweed in to to try and get some vengeance. Take it, but take it out on me. But, but you know, I think you know the tumbleweed has to be safe for moments of true dreadfulness. <laughs> in fact, the whole bloody episode should be called Beef Wellington. Yes, if I've got anything to do with it, which I haven't. I'll see what I can do. I won't be bitter. Matthew's bitter. Mm. Alice is preparing to be bitter about, you know, I was, it did feel a bit random that they just parachuted that whole Brian Will thing in. But anyway, do you think they're, do you think Brian's going as well? Do you think they're going to be killing Brian off soon? He said he's not going anywhere. He said, I'm 
planning to stick around for a long time, didn't he? Which was like, yes, I cheered at that. By the way, Beef Wellington putting in a microwave, no. Oh, That's I funny. highlighted that just wrong. Yep. No microwaving of pastry, thank you. Overcooking the fillet. What's the point? Yeah, that just proved positive Adam's a cretin, as if we needed proof positive. I'd love to play a game of um, uh, Kerry Bingo <laughs> with the podcast one week. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you have to enjoy your order. What is it? You know, the drink Kerry Warbers drinking game. Like you, mm. you know, you take a shot every time. What would it be, Kerry? Um, every diss of I Adam. I love Brian. Yeah. yeah, every bit of horniness towards Brian. We've all got our things. Spare a thought for Ian because he just went into the kitchen and devoured an entire pavlova while they were having this really <laughs> awkward face off. He was just hiding all the time. Did you notice as well? I loved this bit that. Um, Adam offered Brian a nightcap and Brian said, I better not because Ian's waiting in the car outside to take me home. I thought, so Ian's sort of sitting in a car outside and Adam's going, fancy a nightcap to Brian. Are you sure it's a car? He's selling pizzas outside Brian's house. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you know, so Brian could have gone, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll have a few nightcaps and Ian would just still be sitting outside having cooked dinner, hidden in the kitchen with a pavlova and put Xander to bed while he because he was being a bit um, tricky, wasn't he? Because he wanted to stay up with all of them. Yeah, because they were they had that conversation that. um, What was the book? Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. Yeah. But, I mean, that's Adam's new second cousin, Harry McClary, isn't it? He's going to meet him next week. <laughs> there you go, Matthew. You know, no double weeds for you. You've got the good jokes as well. <laughs> um, but, Hank, what's the geography of the village? Does Ian need to give Brian a lift home from Adam and Ian's cottage? Is it down a country lane? Is it a little... You know, because Adam said to... You're asking the wrong people. Stella, that we're trying to look after Brian without him noticing. And I was like, I think he's noticed, mate. He's told you lot to piss off about 50 times in the last Yeah, but who weeks. can refuse a beef, beef Willington? <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, how do you picture... Like, so we've talked before, like Matthew uses the actors uh, to kind of like, you know flesh out what the characters look like for me the village mm. is just like it's like um a movie set it's just a series of set set pieces i don't have any sense of the village as a kind of no, layout at definitely all. not i've seen the odd map or two you know you can see them in books and people show them online and stuff and they go oh no that can't possibly be the case it wouldn't drive past there because that's where that house is and that's where the farm is none mm. of that is in my brain at all about the geography of where anything no. is. No. I don't know where um, Brookfield is in relation to the bull. I don't know where the river is. I don't know anything. There is a map. All. Yeah, no, there are maps all over the shop, aren't there? But mm. I don't absorb them. I look at them, but they don't stay. This whole thing about Stella buggering off for two weeks to Florence for her sister's mm. wedding and leaving Brian in charge, mm. he's going to be kind of like, okay, back at uh, back at Hove Farm, here we go. What's this receipt for a drill? Oh, my God. Oh, who do you think? No, you're right, aren't you, Matthew? Yeah, that's what they're setting up. Stella's going on holiday, but she doesn't realise it's a very, very long one. A P45 is going to arrive um, from Il Postino. Does that mean Adam gets shipped back in? Well, he's going to... He's going to be helping out. Why hasn't it occurred to Adam during this whole conversation with Stella? You know, if only we could think of someone who could manage the farm while you're away. I was like, that was your job, Adam. Yeah, because you got pig shit, isn't you it? Got the, yeah, you got, like, the kicker because you robbed five grand from the company accounts. Mm. But he's going to step in and help, isn't he? But I think that drill, which Adam told Stella months ago... You're the farm manager, Stella. Just go ahead and order it. Don't worry mm. about Brian. When Brian, had, just after Jenny had died, wasn't it? 
Mm. And now I think the, and Brian was totally against that drill. Oh, you've just made me think drill is a type of music, isn't it? It so is. So I've got a quiz for you two. Um, <laughs> okay. Can you, can you name at least two types of dance music mentioned in this week's episode, please? Well, there was a tallow house because yeah. Freddie was going to do an Italo house set. Yeah. Um, was there another type of music mentioned? At, well, maybe two, I would say. At what point, Kerry? Uh, it's a very shit joke, so you probably <laughs> didn't notice. Oh, it's a shit joke. They didn't literally mention it then. Mm, yeah, well, it's open to interpretation, but... There was also Nanny's Garage. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. That is very good. I know. And Jazzy Fleeces. (laughs) (laughs) Peter's just killed himself. (laughs) Peter's trying to think, when did either of those... Two things crop up in the archers this week. I can tell you both. Nana's garage belongs to Susan and Ian owns the jazzy fleeces. I knew about the jazzy fleeces because that was Freddie's rant. That Mm. was when he was... um, That was one of the things about this week was it was so many micro plots all overlapping, all with the same cast members slightly kind of involved Mm -hmm. to differing degrees. It's actually quite difficult to talk about the archers this week with any kind of like coherence. Yes, it is. It's very scrambled, isn't it? Because I was thinking, like, where the fuck are these different Eurovision bloody things and coronation things happening? Didn't care. I don't care. (laughs) I know, but like, where? Because they were going to borrow a screen from the bull. And I was thinking, but isn't that event that you're borrowing the screen from the bull for in the bull or anyway? Well, they're just going to use the big screen, not borrow it. Wouldn't you just say, can I have your big screen, please, Kenton? Do you know what we mean, though? It's what is happening where? You know, there's how many, right, how many Eurovision things are there? There's the... One, and it's happening... No, there isn't. There isn't just one. Is there? I thought there's <laughs> one now, and it's just happening in the bull. I don't think there is just one. Is there Where's really? Where's the other one happening? Yeah. Or maybe there's called... multiple coronation. Anyway, both, it's all awful. Why, they, why would they be borrowing the screen from the bull if it's in the bull? Yeah, Matthew, explain to us. There's a couple of things happening for the coronation. Okay, there's going to be a picnic on the green, as far oh, as I yeah. know. I heard that. What on earth is that? Because that's not been properly explained. Yeah, and Neil's going to do a special bit bell ringing um, for Eurovision. And uh, Kenton's got some... And the illumination coronation. Yeah, the illumina- illumination coronation. Um, oh. Kenton's made some... Sorry about the seagulls are in shagging season. Um, mm. Kenton's got some specialised cocktails, hasn't he? He's got a King Charles, which is yeah. a riff on a classic martini. Yeah. And the Queen Consort, which is a warm mm-hmm. can of white lightning with a Rothman stubbed out in it. <laughs> Brilliant. And a tampon. <laughs> I was trying to work a tampon <laughs> into that and I just couldn't quite do it. Uh, listeners, if you don't know what that's referring to, do not look it up. It's mind scarringly horrific. Definitely look it up because it's an illumination into what this stupid coronation is all about. Yeah, who we're going to be ruled by. I, I got stared at this morning because um, there's a sort of a, a promenade in Folkestone, is well, I get a vaguely good way of putting it, and there's kind of little gardens, and they've done a kind of coronation floral arrangement, kind of like planting in one of the gardens, in one of the pot. beds. We were out for our morning walk this morning and I walked past and I couldn't help it. It's just, like, <laughs> just a giant temp on here. And I was just, I couldn't help it. I was just, I was just, oh, for f- sake. And, uh, and this, this kind of couple looked at me with absolute horror, my lack of royalist zeller, you know, um, um, fervor. Mm-hmm. I, was just, I was just, oh, bloody hell. I, it, there is going to be serious domestic strife at the Fickling household if, Anyone tries to make me watch any of the coronation, I just want to hide away from it the whole weekend. Sounds like there's potential for that. Well, as I said, as I hinted on WhatsApp, there is. Uh, um, my lovely wife did say that she wants to dip in and out of it. Does she mean for the lols? Is it for the lols? Isn't that what Charles said to Camilla? <laughs>
Yeah, just I'd want like to, to just want to take you in and out. Like, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> like a pair of hacks. My saucy fingers. I tell you, the, of all the impressions we've ever had on the show, Peter's King Charles or Prince Charles is the uh, best. Not my king. Hashtag. Oh, I thought you was, oh yeah, not my king. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm never calling him King Charles. No. Never. Prince Charles. He will be Prince Charles until one of us dies. <laughs> I've got a motto for us, which is uh, lick a cider lolly, not a boot. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I've, do you think we're going to sort of um, hemorrhage listeners at this point? Some things in life, I, I'm kind of like, you know, oh, live and let live. Everyone, you know, uh, you know, we've all different shapes, different you know, different, what's it called? What is it? Different strokes, different folks. Different different folks. folks. Yeah. But I am, I'm afraid I am like, it's binary with the whole Royal family thing. Imagine like mm. just try, because all countries are equal, but all, con- all the ways that all country do things do all the ways that all countries do things are not equal. Like it's some things you just look at another country and you're like, that's wrong. And the rest of the world must just look at us and think this is madness. That's what I thought was great about Kenton in his subterfuge ringing Natasha. Mm. courtesy of bridge farm and he was like yeah (laughs) um you know i this might be of interest to you illuminating bridge farm you know because you tie in with a lot of our new king's passions he he pretends to care about the environment whilst taking blood money from evil regimes and uh, he pretends to be welsh oh it's yeah yeah kenton was the closest we got to a republicanist he's comrade Mm. kenton isn't he you remember his old diary that's another pun re Republican. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm That's trampled proper... all over your joke, Kerry. No, sorry. no. It, it didn't occur to me until after I said it. But he, I loved his disinterest, and he was like eating a sandwich upstairs, and Jolene going, "But, but, 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 we can make loads of like money out of this." And he's like, "And I'm just eating a sandwich. <laughs> I don't care." And encouraging Natasha to take full advantage of it. It's going to probably fall back on him and blow up in his face. But he's the closest we've got to any kind of dissent in the Archers about this coronation nonsense. Mm. And I, I'm a bit disappointed in that. I, I really hoped that some of the youngsters or one of the youngsters would say, what are we doing? A bit like Chelsea did with the, um, when she was arguing with Susan about the, uh, about the environment. Mm. You know, it's just like, yeah, well, what about the planet? You know, it's, mm. you know, that's, that's pretty important. Um, actually, I did think like for Susan, because she's obviously like the ultimate royalist so far on the show, like for her, like um, Prince Charles is like the ultimate manager. Like, <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> it just, it makes complete sense that she would just fall mm. into kind of lockstep with the whole thing. Mm. Mm. I mean, you know, we've said before that Susan just inhales the Daily Mail, doesn't she? But yeah. August publication, classic. It is, yeah, it is an August publication. Um, why, yeah, why can't we have some dissenting voices? Mia, probably. Uh, Jim, mm-hmm. I think, would probably be in favour of the coronation just out of tradition. But I can't, I quite feel that maybe Rex wouldn't be much of a a monarchist. Some sort of questioning of it on some level. But they can't, can be. they? They just can't Why do not? it. This is supposed to reflect real life. Yeah, but look village. at the c- that run the BBC. <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. Well, just, all right, one c- down. Yeah, true. <laughs> I am no Fiona Bruce fan, but I have taken a lot of joy out of this new thing she does where she basically says, oh, this this audience is a is split along the lines of, you know, the voting intent of, you know, the the... the people who voted in this district what do you think about this and just these kind of like these perfect moments of just you know the whole audience as one staying completely silent when asked to to raise their hands and i think it's you know you're starting to see a a push back about against some of the insanity she's married to a massive glory isn't she yeah yeah no, she, yeah absolutely I'm, I'm no fan of hers i'm just saying like but she has she has found a way of kind of um cutting through this nonsensical both sides when it comes to Brexit and all this other stuff, which I am, I am appreciating. Anyway, I, you know, Matthew's yeah. in Portugal and I do, I think that I remember when I lived in America, you do, 
just watching the news doesn't give you a sense of like the fact that like I, th- I really do feel that like people like even if they voted for Brexit or I as a Remainer am becoming a lot more forgiving for people who have voted who voted Brexit. I'm no longer no longer cross with them, and I think people who voted Brexit are no longer sort of feeling that kind of dogmatic. Oh, uh, you know, it's 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 a glorious glorious success story. I think it's starting to to turn well, around. You would hope. You would hope. Yeah, you? I don't know. Did you feel like Kerry? Well, you know, the shit is hitting the fan left, right, and centre, isn't it? If if yeah. you can't see by now that it was a very bad idea, mm. then it's yeah. a bit of a mystery, isn't it? Just to go back to the monarchy for a second, I mean, Portugal, the beginning of the end of the monarchy here was the regicide in 1908. And um, sadly, our tourism has never recovered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good one, Matthew. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Dennis, what do we think of him? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, it's such, it's so early on in the story, isn't it? You, I'm just kind of like, I'm just sort of letting it wash over me. I'm just kind of like, okay, let's see what happens. There's not really any any real clues as to the kind of end goal of it. Like, what is it? Is it more mm. of what we were saying about? Is it more just kind of like keeping Chelsea and Brad front front and centre because they're these kind of very popular, very kind of important characters and it's more just kind of fleshing them out and giving them some more, um, you know, uh, mm, backstory? Flesh on the bones kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. But, 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 but in terms of his behaviours and him sort of going, I've turned 50, I was shit, now I'm going to try to get to know you. That's You can kind of think, Right, okay, you want to make some sort of amends, that's perhaps okay, even though it's almost unforgivable that you were shit for all of that time. But for then to hear him say to this relatively young kid of his, I'm lonely, you should be texting me regularly, mm. uh, he, he kind of switched on the guilt tripping to in that very first meeting at the um, chicken place, you know, was mm. it Dando's or Zando's, <laughs> whatever it was, <laughs> with the nice spicy rice and the uh, unlimited lemonade. You can't do that in your very first meeting. Don't start saying to them, I'm a lonely person and I need you to contact me more often and go for chicken wraps now and again. No wonder they're going, no. I don't think so. He seems so um, self-obsessed. He's not thinking about the kids at all, so far anyway. It's all about himself. It's definitely one of those situations where you go into it and you know that you have to just suck up the shite. Like you don't get to, to you know, defend yourself. You don't get to... So do mm. anything except say sorry and listen and let the other mm-hmm. people get the stuff they need to off their chest. And in doing that, you might buy the right eventually to be to answer some questions when they're given to you. Like, what have you been up to? Yeah. Do you ever think about us? You know, uh, mm. why haven't you done this before? Um, like, what do you expect of us in the future? This sort of stuff. But mm. yeah, it's I mean, yeah, he has he has no right he should just be he should just be overwhelmingly actually that's the point isn't it like there was no kind of real he said thank you a bit and he was kind of like oh you know he was trying to show some interest but Mm. it it was you it would just be this overwhelming gratitude to be given the chance that didn't really come across yeah exactly exactly that Mm. how dare he do that to the two kids poor brad he's there sort of sucking on his straw really loudly and going this spicy rice is quite nice i absolutely love that boy he's amazing isn't he and 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 how he he sort of went um well no actually because i'm all right as i am yeah beautiful boy you've just said in so few words um precisely the right thing really it was just you know he wasn't insulting to him he's trying to be nice he sort of said it's nice to see you but he's they're okay as they are 
I'm a child genius who's probably going to invent a, t- invent a technology that will save mankind. So, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yes, yeah, so I'll back off and uh, uh, I'll get another lemonade. <laughs> that's actually, that's a really good point. It's that kind of, he is that perfect, because he's at that he's at that tipping point between childhood and adulthood. And that's something they do so yeah. well with Chelsea and Brad is they can be by turns insightful, um, uh, useful and, you know, thoughtful. Prickly. Exactly. And, and, you know, commanding yeah. as well. Kind of Chelsea can be yeah. quite commanding and then immediately fussing over like a, you know, like a hair bobble or, or yeah. like a, you know, like a, a yeah. lemonade refill or something. Cause Ch- Chelsea, bless her. She sort of went, yeah, I've been working. I've been at college and I had a termination last year. Yeah, that was a right laugh. Well, there was the hole in the plot line, wasn't there? Because, all right, we're supposed to think that Den was in a bad place and uncaring. But the whole reason that Oliver and Brad went to Den's was because Chelsea had gone missing and no one knew where she was at that Mm. time. And Mm -hmm. he doesn't seem to have remembered that happened. He just basically said, well, I'm not surprised given your mother. And then tried to get a load of money out of Oliver to pay for a yeah. fictitious car he didn't have so he could come and visit Ambridge and see his son more. Which bad place was he in? Birmingham. Was it Fel- Fel- <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I can't remember. <laughs> Which of the bad places in the Midlands was it? I told Charlotte about Matthew calling folks in a bad place. I never oh. called folks in a bad place. She was disgusted. We were having a lovely walk yesterday. When did I call folks in a bad place? You inferred it. The listeners know, Matthew. The listeners know. What, the fact that I made a Hitler nappies ad saying they were handcrafted <laughs> in Folkestone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you yeah. need to remember, Peter, is that your wife wants to watch the coronation, so. Yeah, actually, I'm back on Matthew's side. How dare <laughs> she disagree with Matthew about folks and being a dump? <laughs> It's it's really not though. I'm as surprised as you are, Matthew. It's absolutely lovely. But yeah, anyway, yeah, mm. don't move here. Anyone else? Yeah, I, um, I I have yeah yeah. I know. Don't come and spoil it. I had I have no knowledge of Folkestone. I'm I'm literally just uh, I'm joking about it and somehow hitting a nerve without meaning to. I'm looking down our list, guys. Um, we've done the coronation. We've done bell ringing. Yeah. We've done inheritance. Um, Dennis is lonely. Tick. Have um have we done enough about the eurovision stuff because we talked about we don't know where it is mm. but it's it's difficult to describe isn't it? as i said it's been a very bitty week the okay i know what to say i sometimes really <laughs> wonder h- how this stuff gets passed to be put out on air like you know not us <laughs> but the but the archers but sorry the, the, the eurovision is so 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 bad it's got all it's like all of the agonies of like a christmas panto without the excuse of it being christmas and therefore having the tradition um it's some it's completely going all over the place because you've got linda one minute poll the next minute you've got harrison somehow connected then there was the weird scene with justin when he was then like forced to you know like um cough up the money i just don't know what's going on am i missing something exactly. no only matthew knows what's happening why it's all a mess i don't yeah why did justin refuse to um why did justin refuse to pay up anyway just because him and lillian have started using the withdrawal method i don't get it (laughs) because apparently he's pulled out of the business angel yeah oh is is that her name (laughs) business angel um well he said he felt like he was practically blackmailed by a copper Never been heard of. Ooh. Uh, all I want to know about is the foil curtain and the honeycomb balls. Oh, yes. Help me out here. What is a honeycomb ball? Don't know. And he went to Craft and Spangle in Bolchester. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, uh... he, he's a very, very camp character. You said is that your daughter, Peter? Was giving, <laughs> your daughter was giving side eye. Oh, Yeah. Oh, God, it was so funny. Never normally do my children listen at all to the archers. Very sensible. (laughs) Yes. But for some reason, I was listening down in the dining room and my daughter came down, slumped herself on the sofa, was on her phone. 
you know, doing other stuff, but could hear what I was listening to, which I quite enjoy because I like getting the external perspective from time to time. Sometimes when my friend James comes down, he catches it and he's like, the bloody. One of the first things she said was, how is anyone tweeting anything about this? That's her first comment. I, I've never met Mimi, but I really like her. Over the years, I've really <laughs> grown to like Mimi. <laughs> and then when Paul was doing that about the fall curtain, she just like, we have many gay friends in our household. She's away with a gay friend at the moment in Copenhagen. Oh, by the way, they bumped into Sam Smith in Copenhagen today. Um, anyway. Oh, my. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she, but she just really looked. Did they bump into him because he always wears enormous bauble shaped Rubber trousers. And it's impossible not to bump into. <laughs> he wasn't wearing the rubber trousers, I don't think. I saw the film she took of him. He didn't seem to have the rubber trousers on. I'm going to go into the kitchen after this to make a grilled cheese sandwich. I might bump into him. <laughs> Any road. It, you know, we're all familiar with many gay people and he's gay turned up or camp turned up to Kazillion, isn't he? Our Paul. Do you think that's intentional after they've they've gone for the comparatively sort of straight acting Adam and Ian, who like, you know, they're they're fairly kind Possibly. of Possibly. Mm. <laughs> Adam isn't straight acting, he's fing inverted. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's he's, he's not, not really acting. like any human being whatsoever, is he? But yeah, it's you know what I mean, though. It's like it's not. I don't, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I do find. I mean, I enjoy, I like Paul a lot as a character, but sometimes I do find like the campness is reaches levels that are kind of like somewhat implausible. But you know, just a bit embarrassing, I think. I quite liked the interaction between him and Linda at times this week. I thought he, yeah. They worked quite well together. Yeah, but why are they laying it on so thick at times? Why? Mm. We all know why, because it's it's a stereotype, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's quite patronising, don't you think? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% is. Yeah. I do have friends who are very camp, but they do, they do, you know, they um they code switch. They don't just, it's like something they do with friends. Like, they don't, you know, it's not uniform. Whereas Paul mm. seems to kind of like he meets Relentless. someone like when he first met yeah when he first met Justin for the kind of the scene in the when they were kind of t- mm. in the pub to talk about Eurovision and I you know that was where the believability kind of fell down for me because I was like you know he would sort of be toning down the campness for that interaction and then gradually as it moves on or he get you know like he loosens up a bit mm. or Justin loosens up then he he would start to be a bit more camp. It's interesting. It's interesting. I don't. I don't... Like going into the sh- village shop and going, ooh, here I am buying wine in my socks and sliders. You just mm. sort of almost can't possibly just speak without yeah. ticking loads of boxes. I don't I don't know. I it's... found out what a honeycomb ball is. It's one of those right. kind of balls that starts out as a semicircle and you cut it in certain places and open it and it fans out like a really cheap ah, Christmas like decoration. Like a paper thing. Yeah, you know is what it... I mean, don't you? Thank you. Thank God we've solved that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if we we don't know anything about anything else, but we've solved that. <laughs> yeah. Let's celebrate Matthew's research with a, a an advert and um, <laughs> and then crack on. So, guys, I am very very proud of you. I'm very proud of me. I feel like um, we have done the very best any three people can do with the hot mess that was this week's Archers. Uh, I did enjoy bits of it. Like, I'm not I'm mm. not trying to be resolutely negative, but it's like I said, it was just so bitty. Which bits, Peter? Which bits? Uh, all the bits. But, the you know, to, to uh, apparently, you know, it's been a while since someone started a new uh, Archers podcast. So people, anyone who's out there planning to do it, it's not as easy as it sounds sometimes. Like, it is, it's, it, it's you know, a week like this can be quite challenging. So anyway, I feel pat on the back for all of us. So, Kerry, if people want to praise yeah. you for your um, amazing ability to um, uh, pun Beef Willington, anyone, um, where yes. should they go? Come to at the Side Shed Pod on Twitter. You will not be disappointed. It's bang, 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 killer tweets 
all the time. <laughs> God, oh, I'm like excellent. fire. Um, yeah, Festival. it's always me. Absolutely perfect. Brilliant. Nothing like it on any of the other silly old tweet along things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have no new reviews, though, so I would like to ask any of you who haven't yet reviewed us to issue a five-star review unless you're a royalist and you've listened to this and you don't like <laughs> us anymore. <laughs> yes. But they really help us. If you haven't done one, please do. One cannot overstate how much one didn't enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> One star. Internal yeah. tampon, one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, that would be great if you could, please. Thank you. Absolutely. And um, while we're talking about um, nice things you can do for us, um, patreon.com forward slash the cider shed. Uh, it's amazing that um, people get involved and contribute. It makes such a huge difference. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're incredibly grateful and thank you very much. And if anyone fancies helping out, that's where to go. Yeah. And if you are a Patreon and a Royalist, we were just joking about everything we said. Oh God. Yes. I love King Charles. Oh, we're recording a totally different Royalist version to put out for the patrons. <laughs> patrons. <laughs> straight after this. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a video with a, with a union Jack, a uh, union flag flying behind us. Um, well, we've got an Instagram which is the yeah. same handle as our Twitter at the Cider Shed Pod, uh, caused a bit of stir this week because I posted photos of us yesterday having a Zoom mm. meeting where someone said that um, we look exactly like they expected us to look at. <laughs> I don't know oh God. if that's good or bad. Well, they said it was like, you know, a couple of people said, didn't they, on Facebook or Instagram, the, when they see the actors from the archers, mm. they're always kind of shocked. But we look exactly like they expected. And uh, also, and someone they, rated, they've stopped, rated our room. Stopped listening. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the room rating, Kerry? You took offence at that. Only because you said basic beige about me and Peter. Well, I was joking. I mean, my room is green and it looked beige. So mm. we don't all have time to. Uh, you know, spend weeks and weeks and weeks slathering on yeah. you, you know, deluxe. Sanding floors. I mean, I just want to give a little bit of insight into <laughs> the listenership we have. Vincent Baxter got in touch on our Instagram and said, I hadn't thought about it, but when you were joking about the possible resolution of the Sykes story arc, I wondered, could he be Adam's true father? Maybe not, since they've already said there's some link between Adam and Paddy on a genealogy website. Why do I care anyway? It's the most boring plot line. <laughs> that was the end of the message. <laughs> I, do like, just, I do like anyone who doesn't, can't even be bothered to edit their chain of thought. Yeah. They're just like, oh, I've written it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> stream of consciousness. Yeah. Please send your scree- stream scream of consciousness um, yeah, to our email address. Also, they, he did raise later something that we failed to pick up on, was, which was the very obvious joke about rubbing each other out. Oh, yeah. Ball, which, you know. Oh, did you hear Susan say, just the gun, is it, Chelsea? No, so I she didn't was selling that. guns <laughs> I th- I in the village gun. shop. <laughs> mm. oh, maybe. Well, she was going to meet Dan. Yeah, exactly. Just to let you know, Vincent, rubbing one out. I mean, in The Sopranos, it means killing someone, doesn't it? But as far as I'm concerned, in, in England, it means like playing five against one. Or stealing Ireland. So do you guys um, have it in you to talk about football this week? I would completely no. understand if neither of you wanted to. Kerry, go off. off you go. Okay. I have had a shit, shit, shit football week. Brighton f***ed up on the penalties in the FA Cup semi-final. Brighton boy, Solly March, missed the target. So we're out. That was horrible. Again, Again he missed the target in the other penalty shootout, didn't he? In exactly the same, yeah, I think so. Yeah. When they when they went out of the league cup. Oh, that, I don't, I don't know. I never re- retain information like that. I don't know why. You don't retain penalty information or the years of egg problems, Kerry. No, no. the years of egg problems. I am a goldfish. <laughs> then Arsenal played Man City, and it was as if we weren't there. 
as a team. It was very I was there embarrassing. watching. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your um, performance then. I've, I've zoned out. It's all over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not there anymore. The season's finished. Isn't karma bits, everyone? I get slagged off every week for my um, fancy <laughs> football team and Matthew and Kerry's genuine football teams have been absolutely <sighs> done over. Mm. So there we go. Football chat. How Brilliant. are Wester Ham doing, Peter? I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> just the same, every, same every season. They sit in the middle of the table. Sometimes they go down. Sometimes they come up. I mean, I you know, I'm not a proper fan anymore. The thing is, though, they've got Ham in their title, and that's great. Yeah, which makes me always think of um, uh, Frank and his um, rum ham from It's Always Sunny. Oh yeah, the yeah. <laughs> which I, I, whenever yes. I think of that, I'm like, I really should try and make some rum ham. It does seem like a genuinely good idea. Yeah. Um, I've got high hopes for the next week. I think something good's got to happen. So, um, uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening, everyone. And Matthew and Kerry, have a lovely weekend. See you later, everyone. Goodbye. And thank you. See you next week. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Hello.